In this lecture, we'll be talking about shadow banking system and Hyman Minsky's economic journey. Now, who was Hyman Minsky? Hyman Minsky was an economist who first predicted the financial crisis of 2008-2009 in the early 1980s through his financial instability hypothesis. Now, obviously, Hyman Minsky didn't predict exact time but he kind of like foresaw what's happening in the financial sector in terms of the huge amount of debts that banks or financial institutions were taking over, also known as leverage. Now, before we go into details, first let's discuss what does this shadow banking means? What is a shadow bank? So shadow bank funds themselves with uninsured short-term funding which may or may not be backstopped by liquidity lines from real banks. These are typically non-depository financial institutions. Now there's nothing shadowy about them. It's simply that they operate outside the standard legal system because there's no laws are there to control them. And they are often highly risky but they also generate very high returns and some examples of shadow banks are investment banks, hedge funds, and money market funds, which we all know are highly profitable, but also highly risky. And often shadow banks are typically unregulated. That means they are not regulated by standard laws. And they are not regulated, it's simply not because nobody wants to regulate them, simply the laws haven't caught up with the financial innovation that happened in this sector. So it often takes some time for the policymakers to understand what's happening and then the laws come through, but by that time, new kind of financial products often come to the market. So shadow banks typically operate in unsecured debt such as interbank borrowing and commercial paper and secured borrowing such as reverse repo and asset-backed commercial paper. Now, what is a commercial paper? Commercial paper is a commonly used type of unsecured short-term debt instrument issued by the corporations. Now, why they are issuing it? They are issuing it typically used for financing payroll, account payable, and inventories and meeting other short-term liabilities. And often maturities of commercial bank typically last several days and rarely longer than 270 days. So these are a short-term way of financing these businesses. And often investment banks would love to buy these stocks from corporations because often they have much higher returns. And we all know investment banks, hedge funds, money market funds often are very good way of generating returns. Though not money market fund that much, but primarily the investment banks and hedge funds. Who backs up all these shadow bank activities? These are backed up by credit rating agencies like S&P, Moody's, or Fitch. So these are credit rating agencies. They often back up this. They have specialized people who often go through their documents and try to give it a rating. And based on that rating, this often shadow bankers or investment banks buy these stuff. Though these are really good during a good time. Again, all this needs to be backed by something and that something is the asset. So let's now get into the financial instability hypothesis. This is the hypothesis which was proposed by Hyman Minsky. I will also call it FIH as a short form. So financial instability hypothesis explains the endemic boom bust cycles of capitalism, including the bubbles in property prices, mortgage finance, and shadow banking. Now, how all these things unfolds in reality? That's the whole thing. And that's what financial instability hypothesis is primarily concerned about. And it generally works through three stages. There are three stages in Minsky's financial instability hypothesis. I'm, I'm going to explain those stages using the mortgage market because that's the one market that led to the financial crisis of the 2008-2009 during the trade recession. The stage one is the hedge financing, which is also called regular kind of mortgages. 
in the mortgage market. Now, hedge financing has nothing to do with hedge funds. Let's be very clear on this. What is hedge financing? It's like your normal loans or normal mortgages where you take out a mortgage and you pay it over say 15 years or 30 years. Every month you make a very specific constant payment. Out of that payment, a part goes towards the principal and the part goes towards your interest. So these are normal loans under normal circumstances. However, what happened during the financial, right before the financial crisis of 2009 was a huge increase in home prices. Now, when home prices were increasing, mortgages were becoming more and more unaffordable for the common persons. So what banks came up with an idea is called speculative financing. What is an example of speculative financing is interest-only mortgage. Banks said to the borrowers, hey, don't worry. What we'll do, we will issue a higher mortgage and your monthly payments will be lower because all you have to pay every month is the mortgages and you will not pay anything on the principal. So after 30 years, your whole principal will be due at a, at a single point of time. But the whole idea is that by that time, perhaps household will have saved enough money to pay back the bank. Now you might ask the question, why banks were taking up so much risk? Because this was backed by rising asset price such as homes, because home prices were rising. Say after 15 years, if somebody was unable to pay back the actual principal on the mortgage, banks can always repossess their homes and sell it in the market at a higher asset price. So it's a win-win for a bank. So bank earned interest for 15 years. After 15 years, they just uh, take over the home if the household is unable to pay back the principal on those loans. And as a result, they could sell it at a higher price. So they would be earning more profits. Now what happened in reality? So for households, they saw, oh, they can make very less payment and buy a bigger and expensive house. So it also fueled the asset market for homes because a lot of people started buying a lot of homes. People who couldn't, shouldn't have been approved, they started buying homes because they know all they have to make the payment is the interest only payment. That means they will be paying only interest every month and no payment will go towards the principal, which is win for the bank, which was win for the household. And all those looked fine if the home prices were increasing. Now, here's another problem. As home prices increase further, that means again mortgages become unaffordable for the households because now for the same homes, they have to pay higher and higher interest because they are borrowing more and more money. So that led to the stage three, which is called Ponzi financing or negative amortization. What is negative amortization? Here what happens, you even don't pay all the interest due in a month. You pay only part of the interest and rest of the interest gets added to the principal. So basically now you can literally borrow money to buy a house even without making the total interest payment that's accused to your loans every month. This again makes the homes very affordable this also works for the bank because now in the end of the day, they know their principal is increasing, which means more interest payments for them. And all these are again backed by rising asset price, such as homes, because over time, they know if in the end of the day, households are unable to pay back their principal, banks can repossess those homes and sell it at higher price, assuming home prices keeps on rising. However, this also kind of leads to higher home prices. At one time, the market realizes home prices are increasing too much. It was exacerbated by the rising interest rates that we talked about in the last lecture about financial crisis, where Fed started raising the interest rate because they wanted to cool down this bubble that was forming in the housing market. Suddenly, people who borrowed all these adjustable rate mortgages realize they can't pay back those mortgages, even not the interest payments or even the partial interest payments they are doing. As a result, what happens? The whole asset price start decreasing. This is called debt or deflationary pressure 
on assets and in this case asset was the home so home prices started decreasing because of too much of lending that happened and the assumption was that home prices will always rise that may not be always true we saw that home prices decline so in the end of the day what happened there's an increased role for government to support depression deflationary pressure that's why what ended up happening fed had non-conventional monetary policies where they bought all these mortgage-backed securities to stabilize the market and from whom they bought they bought from the banks who were holding many of these mortgage-backed securities so it finally leads to the support of the government some kind of non-conventional monetary policies to support the financial sector and all this was predicted by Hyman Minsky through his financial instability hypothesis in the 19 or early 1980s and it works through hedge financing speculative financing and ponzi financing which is the pinnacle of this crisis after that the market crashes